Hello my friends, welcome back to the Sussex Daily News Channel. In this video, we update the breaking news. Prince Harry ordered to stand up against Meghan Markle over the latest royal family controversy. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have faced a backlash following a video they made reminding Americans of the importance of voting. The Duke and Duchess have been criticized by many for appearing to become overly political, and some have interpreted their words as an endorsement for presidential candidate Joe Biden. Royal commentators Dan Wooten and Don Neeson reflected on this and argued Harry should insist that the pair remain politically neutral. Mr. Wooten said, I say that for the moment Prince Harry remains the obedient, nodding, wannabe first man. He is chipping in on Meghan Markle's pet projects with perfectly scripted wokeism, British princely charm. But what happens when, when Prince Harry actually stands up to Meghan for the first time? What happens when Harry says no to Meghan? I'm actually going to put the sanctity of the institution that I was brought up in first. I actually shudder to think about what would happen because I can't imagine Meghan would take it very well. Ms. Neeson added, she admitted that she thought it was unlikely Harry would stand up to Meghan on the issue of becoming too political. She added, do you think it's going to happen, Dan? He is never going to stand up to her. He is the very definition of a hen-pecked husband. I never wanted to say this, and I wanted to think it was six of one and half a dozen of the other. Mr. Wooten closed by insisting that he believes both Harry and Meghan are as bad as each other. Meanwhile, Prince Harry also faces calls to be removed from the line of succession over his U.S. election comments after President Donald Trump hit out at wife Meghan Markle. Comments about hate speech and peaceful protesters were interpreted as supportive of the Democrats, with one journalist telling the president at a White House briefing they had endorsed Joe Biden. Now commentators in the UK are arguing the prince should be removed from the list of people in line to the throne, ensuring he can never be king. Royal biographer and GMA contributor Robert Jobson told the Daily Mail, frankly, by saying they are HRHs and the Duke and Duchess, but allowing to use the titles just confuses the situation. And in the latest update, the 240,000 pound slap in the face. Royal experts blasted Meghan Markle and Prince Harry for they have justified the year's most expensive royal trip, which they used to launch a personal attack on the press. Today, royal experts say Meghan Markle and Prince Harry could have justified the sky-high cost of their tour of Africa if they had not ended it with a personal attack on the press. On the final day of the trip, Meghan announced she was launching a privacy lawsuit against the Mail on Sunday. But the decision, which drew criticism at the time, has been described as an extraordinary own goal by royal watcher Richard Fitzwilliams. His comments come after a new report today revealed that the, the tour cost £240,000 and was the most expensive royal trip of last year. Mr. Fitzwilliams, a royal commentator and public relations expert, told Mail Online, Harry and Meghan's trip to South and Southern Africa had all the hallmarks of being a historic success until Meghan launched a privacy lawsuit against the Mail on Sunday on its last day. The Sussexes were representing the Queen in a Commonwealth country. This was no way to conduct matters, placing self over duty so publicly, and it was also totally unprecedented. Had they not used it climatically for personal purposes, this 10-day tour of Southern Africa would have gone down as an historic success, with memorable events such as taking their son Archie to meet the iconic Archbishop Desmond Tutu and Harry retracing his mother's footsteps in an Angolan minefield. He added, it was an extraordinary own goal. Another royal watcher, Phil Dampier, also said the timing of the interview ruined the goodwill generated from the tour. Speaking to the Mail Online, Mr. Dampier, who's been writing about the royal family for 33 years and penned the book Royally Suited, Harry and Meghan, in their own words, said, These trips are all asked for and planned by the Foreign Office, where they want them to show and support goodwill. I think it would have been money well spent had they not ruined it by attacking the press at the end. It took away from any of the goodwill and the good causes they were trying to promote. I feel the money was squandered because of that bad publicity. 
In the interview with Tom Bradbury, Mr. Dampier added, the interview she gave made all the headlines the next day rather than the good causes they were trying to promote. She could have done that interview from home and not spent a quarter of a million pounds. Another royal watcher, Robert Jobson, said, The trip itself was a positive one. It was well received on a daily basis, making positive headlines for the work they did on behalf of the government. That said, the absurd timing of their unwanted attack on the press and the negative headlines that followed overshadowed all the positive work that was put in. They took two steps forward and three steps back. The comments come as Royal Accounts published today show £245,643 was spent on scheduled flights and a private jet for the couple and their entourage, making it the most expensive royal trip of the year. And many fans slammed them. One wrote, The Sussexes should have said no to the tour because they already planned to leave the royal family. They only went on this tour to throw a pity party. A lot of money that might have been better used in the villages they visited. Or, at the very least, let the people be the focus. I suspect a large part of the cost was transporting what I think was Range Rovers. The second said, They visited some of the poorest countries and people in the world, moan about how hard done they are, and then spent that amount of money on the tour. They are a hypocrite. Almost everything they've done and said has been a slap in the in the face for the British public. Talk about biting the hand that feeds you. Meanwhile, the third added, that's disgusting. Her standing, spouting her woe is me nonsense after seeing impoverished people sums her up. Whatever is going on around her, the priority is Megan, and she can't take her head out of her own backside for two seconds to think about or show empathy to anyone else. This is why the British public doesn't support them anymore. It's nothing to do with Meghan and her skin color. It's everything to do with how delusional, hypocritical, and expectant they are. And the last one says, The public has had enough of these two. Not just in Britain, either. They have created such a sense of unease with them. Their hypocritical speeches on how the rest of the world should live, while they do the opposite. The taking advantage of their positions to gain popularity, albeit futile. Shame on them. Hold them responsible for their behavior and strip them of all their titles so they may continue with a life of normality, as they so requested, and where they are no longer longer recognized as part of the British royal family. No trip could possibly justify the amount spent on these two. They were supposed to be representing the queen and country, but threw it all back into our faces by their petty complaints and antagonism towards the press. Cut them adrift without titles and stop reporting their every thought. And you, what do you think of them? Please let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and share with your own followers. And as always, subscribe to our channel for all the latest news on the royal family, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry right here. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.